This is a match cut. Voila. Very commonly used in film, but I'm gonna show you how to use this technique to create really visually interesting social videos like these. You can do this on photos and videos. For photos, it's a little bit easier for video. You can either freeze frame the shot or you can use microseconds of each video clip. It's quite easy to do, but it can be a little bit of a tedious process. You'll need a consistent shape or object to focus in on and a bunch of images of this subject, preferably with different backgrounds. You can do a little math to figure out how many images you'll need. If you wanna do, let's say 12 frames per second and you want the video length to be 10 seconds, 12 times 10. So you'll need 120 photos. That is if I did the math correctly which I'm not sure because math was not my strong suit. But that's all based on preference. You can do 24 frames per second. You can do 30, you can do eight. First thing I'm gonna need is a subject and a bunch of photos of said subject. So I'm gonna go pull those. I'm on Unsplash here to pull some royalty free images. And I've decided to use a tennis ball as my subject since they're all pretty much the same shape. So I'm gonna go ahead and download a bunch of images, making sure I pick ones where the tennis ball is fully visible in the frame. This can work across pretty much any editing platform. I'm gonna use Premiere Pro. And with that said, let's hop into the post process. So I've imported all my images into Premiere Pro. I'm gonna highlight all of them, right click, select speed duration, and change this to whatever you like. I like to use this duration. This is gonna make all your photos the same length when importing them into your timeline. Go ahead and drag them into your sequence. Then I like to highlight all them, right click and select scale to frame size. This just makes it easier to see them all. Then we're gonna go over to this little wrench. Make sure show ruler and show guides are checked and select save margin so we can see the center point of our frame. I'm gonna to go to the corner of my program window here, drag out these guidelines, and you can use these lines to create a custom match point shape. I'm gonna make one that hits all four corners of the tennis ball. From here, you're gonna to wanna to go through each image and line them up according to the markers that you just made. I've got them all lined up. Already, you can see the effect coming to life. From here, you can stylize it however you like. So I'm gonna rearrange these according to size from smaller to larger. This will make it look more cohesive. Now that they're in an order I like, I'm gonna add some movement. So I'll create an adjustment layer and put it on top of all my photos. Go into my effects tab and drag the transform effect onto my adjustment layer. Here I can add some motion keyframes. So I'll start with scale and have it slowly scale up over time. I'll also add a slight rotation keyframe for some extra movement. Let's go ahead into our Lumetri color and change the color to black and white so it looks even more cohesive. By the way, I don't know if you guys know this, but I use these cool paper texture effects in my videos a lot. And this is from my paper assets pack. And these assets would do really well with this sort of match cut effect. So if you wanna check it out, check it out. I spent a lot of time ripping paper and recycling it. I did recycle. From my paper assets pack, I'm gonna add this white paper texture. I'll highlight all my images, right click and nest them together, then drag my texture underneath it all. I'll also add this grain overlay from my paper pack, drag it on top of all my images and change the blend mode to overlay. And there you have it. And that is how you do this match cut effect. This is kind of a foundation, but I feel like there's so much more you can do with it. For example, one of my favorite creators, Ari Farroy, sorry if I'm butchering your name. He did this match cut effect, but in like a 3D way. It's great if you have a client who has a bunch of archive photos of like a product from a bunch of shoots, use this technique and create basically a standalone ad. And that's it. Thank you all for watching. I will see you when I see you, which could be never, but will be on the next tutorial. Goodbye. Thank you.